Hi everybody. I hope everybody is doing well and enjoying um, a healthy, happy summer with your family and with friends. Uh, I really just felt led to, to come out and do a video on uh, something that I have read several times and you may have heard about it. I don't know if you've ever read it, but um, there was a vision that Joe Brandt was given when he was 17. And this is of the earthquake in California. And this was back in 1937. And from what I have heard, William Branham, um, he was a well-known evangelist in, I believe, the 50s. He was given something very similar to this vision. And I think we all know that these things are coming. These judgments are coming on the U.S. And we, as the church, as the body of Christ, we have got to get the word out. We have got to warn people. You know, there is no more time. There's no more time to delay, to, you know, make that decision for Christ. You know, the rapture, we talk a lot about the rapture happening soon, but the reality is none of us know if we're going to have tomorrow. So it's so important right now, you know, that we really do get this revelation of truth, um, that it's not just people who are, um, you know, out there just thinking these things up and just trying to cause fear or trying to cause panic in people. You know, there are very well-educated, grounded people who have been warning about this West Coast event that's coming. You know, I think that the East Coast event's going to unfold very soon too, um, but this West Coast event, I wanted to share this. I just felt that the Holy Spirit wanted me to read Joe Brandt's vision to you, um, just so that you can get this, this visual, this, um, this understanding of what the Lord has shown him. And, um, and hopefully it will inspire us all, you know, to, to enter into prayer and into intercession. And even though I know these things are coming, there, there, there's no turning back. Um, maybe it can be lessened, you know, if people start coming to repentance, if people start turning to the Lord. Okay, so again, this is a vision uh, by Joe Brandt. He was 17 years old, and this was in 1937. And I'm just going to read the vision as I, I found it out on the Internet. I woke up in the hospital room with a terrific headache, as if the whole world was revolving inside my brain. I remember vaguely the fall from my horse, Blackie. As I lay there, pictures began to form in my mind, pictures that moved with the speed of lightning, pictures that revolved, pictures that stood still. I seemed to be in another world, whether it was the future or whether it was some ancient land, I could not say. Then slowly, like the silver screen of the talkies, but with color and smell and sound. I seemed to find myself in Los Angeles. It was Los Angeles. It was bigger and much bigger and buses and odd shaped cars crowded the city streets. I thought about Hollywood Boulevard and I found myself there on Hollywood Boulevard. Whether this is true, I don't know, but there were a lot of guys about my age with beards and wearing some of them earrings. All the girls wore real short skirts, and they slouched along, moving like a dance. I wondered if I could talk to them, and I said hello, but they didn't hear me or see me. I decided that I would look as funny to them as they looked to me. I tried for a while, that crazy kind of walk. I guess it's something you have to learn. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I noticed there was a quietness about the air, a kind of stillness. Something else was missing, something that should be there. At first, I couldn't figure it out. I didn't know what it was, and then I did. There were no birds. I listened. I walked two blocks north of the boulevard. All houses, no birds. I wondered what had happened to them. Had they gone away? Where? Again, I could hear the stillness. I had never experienced anything like it. I listened, just the stillness. Then I knew something was going to happen. I wondered what year it was. It certainly was not 1937. I saw a newspaper paper on the corner with a picture of the president. It surely wasn't Mr. Roosevelt. He was bigger, heavier, big ears. If it wasn't 1937, I wondered what year it was. It looked like 1969, but I wasn't sure. My eyes weren't working just right. Someone was coming, someone in 1937. It was that fat nurse ready to take my temperature. I woke up, crazy dream. There are pages here about some similar dream occurring, finding himself in Los Angeles, although it was the next day in 1937. 
It was the same day in Los Angeles, and the dream would continue where the last dream left off. Okay. My headache is worse. It is a wonder I didn't get killed on that horse. I've had another crazy dream back in Hollywood. Those people, why do they dress like that, I wonder? I found myself back on the boulevard. I was waiting for something to happen. Something big was going to happen, and I was going to be there. I looked up at the clock down by that big theater. It was ten minutes to four. Something big was going to happen. I walked down the street. In the concrete in front of a theater, they had names of stars. I recognized a few of them. The other names I had never heard. I was getting bored. I wanted to get back to the hospital in Fresno, and I wanted to stay there on the boulevard, even if nobody could see me. Those crazy kids, why were they dressed like that? Maybe it is some big Halloween doings, but it doesn't seem like Halloween, more like early spring. There was that sound again, the lack of sound. Stillness, stillness, stillness. Don't these people know that the birds have gone somewhere? The quiet is getting bigger and bigger. I know it's going to happen. Something is going to happen. Something is happening now. It sure did. She woke me up, grinning and smiling, that fat nurse again. It's time for your milk, kiddo, she said. Gosh, old women of 30 acting like the cat's pajamas. Next time, maybe she'll bring hot chocolate. Remember, he was 17 years old, so. The moment of the happening. Where have I been? Where haven't I been? I've been to the ends of the earth and back. I've been to the end of the world. There isn't anything left. Not even Fresno, even though I'm lying here right this minute. If only my eyes would get a little clearer so I could write all this down. Nobody will believe me anyway. I'm going back to the last moment on the boulevard. Some sweet kid went past dragging a little boy, twins I guess, by each hand. Her skirt was up, well, pretty high and she had a tired look. I thought for a minute I could ask her about the birds, what had happened to them, and then I remembered she didn't see me. Her hair was all frowsy, way out all over her head. A lot of them looked like that, but she looked so tired and like she was sorry about something. I guess she was sorry before it happened, because it surely didn't, did happen. There was a funny smell. I don't like it. A smell like sulfur, sulfuric acid, a smell like death. For a minute, I thought I was back in chemistry. When I looked around for the girl, she was gone. I wanted to find her for some reason. It was as if I knew something was gonna happen and I could stay with her and help her. She was gone and I walked half a block, then saw the clock again. My eyes seemed glued on that clock. I couldn't move. I just waited. It was five minutes to four o'clock on a sunny afternoon. I thought I would stand there looking at the clock forever, waiting for something to come. Then when it came, it was nothing. It was just nothing. It wasn't nearly as hard as the earthquake we had two years ago. The ground shook just an instant. People looked at each other, surprised. Then they laughed. I laughed too. This was what I had been waiting for? This funny little shake? It meant nothing. I was relieved and I was disappointed. What had I been waiting for? I started back up the boulevard, moving my legs like those kids. How did they do it? I never found out. I felt as if the ground wasn't solid under me. I knew I was dreaming, and yet I wasn't dreaming. There was that smell again, coming like from the ocean. I was getting to the five and dime newberries, and I saw the look on the kids' faces. Two of them were right in front of me, coming my way, both with beards. One with earrings. One said, let's get out of this place. Let's go back east. He seemed scared. It was as if the sidewalks were trembling, but you couldn't seem to see them. Not with your eyes. You couldn't. An old lady had a dog, a little white dog, and she stopped and looked scared and grabbed him in her arms and said, let's go home, Fru-Fru. Mom is going to take you home. That poor old lady hanging onto her dog. I got scared, real scared. I remembered the girl. She was way down the block, probably. I started to run. I ran and ran, and the ground kept trembling. But I couldn't see it. I couldn't feel it, but I knew it was trembling. Everybody looked scared. They looked terrible. One young lady just sat down on the sidewalk and doubled up. She kept saying, earthquake, it's the earthquake, over and over. But I couldn't see that anything was different. Then, when it came, how it came. Like nothing in God's world, like nothing. It was the scream of a siren, long and low, or the scream of a woman I heard having a baby when I was a kid. It was awful. It was as if some monster was pushing up the sidewalks. 
You felt it long before you saw it, as if the sidewalks wouldn't hold anymore. I looked out at the cars. They were honking, but not scared. They just kept moving. They didn't seem to know yet that anything was happening. Then that white car, that baby half-sized one, came sprawling from the inside lane right against the curb. The girl who was driving just sat there. She sat there with her eyes staring as if she couldn't move, but I could hear her. She whimpered like a little girl. She made funny noises. I watched her thinking of the other girl. I sat there. I said, this, it was a dream, and I woke up. But I didn't wake up, but I didn't wake up. The shaking had started again, but this time different. It was a nice shaking, like a cradle being rocked for a minute, and then I saw the middle of the boulevard seemed to be breaking in two. The concrete looked as, as if it were being pushed straight up by some giant shovel. It was breaking in two. That is why the girl's car went out of control, and then a loud sound again like I've never heard before. Then hundreds of sounds, all kinds of sounds. Children and women and those crazy guys with earrings, they were all moving, it seemed, some of them above the sidewalk. I can't describe it. They were lifted up, and the waters kept oozing and oozing. The cries, it was awful. I woke up. I never want to have that dream again. It came again, like the first time, which was a preview, and all I could remember was that it was the end of the world. I was right back there, all that crying, right in the middle of it. My eardrums felt as if they were going to burst. Noise everywhere, people falling down, some of them badly hurt. Pieces of buildings, chips flying in the air. One hit me hard on the side of the face, but I didn't seem to feel it. I wanted only to wake up, to get away from this place. It had been fun in the beginning, the first dream, when I kind of knew I was going to dream the end of the world or something. This was terrible. There were older people in the cars. Most of the kids were in the streets, but those old guys were yelling bloody murder as if anybody could help them. Nobody could help them. Nobody could help them. It was then that I felt myself lifted up. Maybe I had died. I don't know, but I was over the city. It was tilting toward the ocean, like tilting a picnic table. The buildings were holding better than you could believe. They were holding, they were holding. The people saw they were holding and they tried to cling to them or get inside. It was fantastic, like a building had a will of its own. Everything else breaking around them and they were holding, holding. I was over them looking down. I started to root for them. Hold that line, I said, hold that line, hold that line. I wanted to cheer, to shout, to scream. If the buildings held, those buildings on the boulevard, maybe the girl, the girl with the two kids, maybe she could get inside. It looked that way for a long time, maybe three minutes, and three minutes was like forever. Everybody was trying to get inside. They were going to hold. You knew they were going to hold, even if the waters kept coming up, only they didn't. I've never imagined what it would look like for a building to die. A building dies just like a person. It gives way. Some of the bigger ones did just that. They began to crumble like an old man with palsy who couldn't take it anymore. They crumble right down to nothing, and the little ones screamed like mad over and above the roar of the people. They were mad about dying. But buildings die. I couldn't look anymore at the people. I kept wanting to get higher. I kept willing myself to go higher. Then I seemed to be out of it all, but I could see. I seemed to be up on Big Bear near San Bernardino, but the funny thing is that I could see everywhere. I knew what was happening. The earth seemed to start to tremble again. I could feel it even though I was up high. This time it lasted maybe 12 seconds and it was gentle. You couldn't believe anything so gentle could cause so much damage. But then I saw the streets of Los Angeles and everything between San Bernardino Mountains and LA. It was all tilting toward the ocean, houses, everything that was left. I could see the big lanes, dozens of big lanes still loaded with cars, five lanes in one place and all the cars sliding the same way. Now the ocean was coming in, moving like a huge snake across the land. I wondered how long it was. I could see the clock. Even though I wasn't there on the boulevard, it was 4.29. It had been half an hour. I was glad I couldn't hear the crying anymore, but I could see everything. I could see everything. Then, like looking at a huge map of the world, I could see what was happening on the land and with people. San Francisco was feeling it, but she was not in any way like Hollywood or Los Angeles. I seemed to see it was the Garlock Fault, not just the San Andreas, that was rocking San Francisco. It was moving just like the earthquake movie with 
Jeanette McDonald and Gable. I could see all those mountains coming together, the Sierra Nevada and the San Andreas and Garlock. I knew what was going to happen to San Francisco. It was going to turn over because of Garlock. It would turn upside down. It went quickly because of the twisting, I guess. It seemed much faster than Hollywood, but then I wasn't exactly there. I was a long, long way off. I shut my eyes for a long time, I guess 10 minutes, and when I opened them, I saw the Grand Canyon. That great big gap was closing in. The Boulder Dam was being pushed from underneath, and then Nevada, and up and on up to Reno, way down south, way down Baja, California, Mexico too. It looks like, like some volcano down there was erupting along with everything else. I saw the map of South America, especially Colombia, another volcano eruption shaking violently. Venezuela seemed to be having some kind of volcanic activity. Away off in the distance, I could see Japan on a fault too. It was so far off, not easy to see because I was still on Big Bear Mountain, but Japan started to go into the sea. I couldn't tell time then, and the people looked like dolls far away. I couldn't hear the screaming, but I could see the surprised look on their faces. They looked so surprised. They were all like dolls. It was so far away, I could hardly see it. In a minute or two, it seemed over. Everybody was gone. There was nobody left. I didn't know time now. I couldn't see a clock. I tried to see the island of Hawaii. I could just see a, the huge tidal waves beating against it. The people on the streets were getting wet and they were scared, but I didn't see anybody going into the sea. I seemed, I seemed way around the globe, more flooding. Is the world going to be drenched? Constant, Constantinople, Black Sea rising, Suez Canal, for some reason seemed to be drying up. Sicily, she doesn't hold. I could see a map. Mount Etna is shacking. A lot of this area seemed to go, but it seemed to be earlier or later. I wasn't sure of the time now. England, huge floods, but no tidal waves. Water, water everywhere, but no one going into the sea. People were frightened and crying. Some places, they fell on the streets on their knees and started to pray for the world. I didn't know the English were emotional. Ireland, Scotland, all kinds of churches were crowded, it seemed, night and day. People were carrying candles and everybody was crying for California, Nevada, parts of Colorado, maybe all of it, even Utah. Everybody was crying. Most of them didn't even know anybody in California, Nevada, or Utah, but they were crying as if they were blood kin, like one family, like it happened to them. New York was coming into view. She was still there. Nothing had happened yet water le the water level was way up. Here, things were different. People were running in the streets yelling, end of world. Kids ran into restaurants and ate everything in sight. I saw a shoe, string, or a shoe store with all the shoes gone in about five minutes. Fifth Avenue, everybody running. <clears throat> Some radio blasting from a loudspeaker that in a few minutes power might be shut off. They must control themselves. Five girls were running like mad toward the YWCA. That place on Lexington or somewhere. They ran like they were scared to death, but nothing was happening in New York. I saw an old lady with garbage cans filling with them with water. Everybody seemed scared to death. Some people looked dazed. The streets seemed filled with loudspeakers. It wasn't daylight. It was night. I saw like the next day and everybody was topsy-turvy. Loudspeakers again about fuel tanks broken in areas, shortage of oil. People seemed to be looting markets. Oregon, Washington, the Dakotas, Missouri, Minnesota, Canada, I saw a lot of places that seemed safe, and people were not scared, especially the rural areas. Here, everything was almost as if nothing had happened. People seemed headed to those places, some on foot, some in cars, that still had fuel. I heard, or somehow I knew, that somewhere in the Atlantic, land had come up, a lot of land. I was getting awful tired. I wanted to wake up. I wanted to go back to the girl to know where she was, she and those two kids. I found myself back in Hollywood and it was still 429. I wasn't up on Big Bear then. I was perched over Hollywood. I was just there. It seemed perfectly natural in my dream. I could hear now. I could hear someplace a radio station blasting out telling people not to panic. They were dying in the streets. There were picture stations with movies, some right in Hollywood. These were carrying on with all the shaking. One fellow in the picture TV station was a little short guy who should have been scared to death, but he wasn't. He kept shouting and reading instructions. Something about helicopters or planes would go over, some kind of planes, but I knew they couldn't. 
things were happening in the atmosphere. The waves were rushing up now, waves, such waves, nightmare waves. Then I saw again Boulder Dam going down, pushing together, pushing together, breaking apart. Grand Canyon was pushing together and Boulder Dam was breaking apart. It was still daylight. All these radio stations went off at the same time Boulder Dam had broken. I wondered how everybody would know about it, people back east. That was when I saw the ham radio operators. I saw them in the oddest places, as if I were right there with them, like the little guy with glasses. They kept sounding the alarm. One kept saying, this is California. We are going into the sea. This is California. We are going into the sea. Get to the high places. Get to the mountains. All states west, this is California. We're going in to the sea. We're going to the... It just breaks me up even just reading this. All states west, this is California. We're going to the... We're going to the... I thought he was going to say sea, but I could see him. He was inland, but the waters had come in. His hand was still clinging to the table. He was trying to get up so that once again he could say, this is California. We're going in to the sea. This is California. We're going into the sea. I seemed to hear this over and over and over for what seemed hours, just those words. They kept it up until the last minute, all of them calling out, get to the mountains. This is California. We're going into the sea. I woke up. It didn't seem as if I had been dreaming. I've never been so tired. For a minute or two, I thought it had happened. I wondered about two things. I hadn't seen what happened to Fresno, which is where he lived, and I hadn't found out what happened to that girl. I've been thinking about it all morning. I'm going home tomorrow. It was just a dream. It was nothing more. Nobody in the future on Hollywood Boulevard is going to be wearing earrings and those beards. Nothing like that is ever going to happen. That girl was so real to me. That girl with those two kids, it won't ever happen. But if it did, how could I tell her? Maybe she isn't even born yet to move away from California when she has her twins. And she can't be on the boulevard that day. She was so real. The other thing, those ham operators hanging on like that over and over saying the same thing. This is California. We're going into the sea. This is California. We're going into the sea. Get to the mountains. Get to the hilltops. California, Nevada, Colorado, Arizona, Utah. This is California. We're going into the sea. I guess I'll hear that for days.